If you are wishing to know more about fishing, you don't need a book. Just come and see the cook and the cook. If you are looking to know more about cooking, you know where to look. Just come and see the cook and the cook. Scotty will hook them, and Paul he will cook them. They like to travel and learn new stuff. Come and see the hook and the cook. Today, Scotty and I are heading out to the Goulburn Valley Fly Fishing Centre. It is located less than two hours' drive from the Melbourne CBD and is situated on the Goulburn and Rubicon Rivers in the town of Thornton. I've never been fly fishing before and I can't wait to have a crack at it. Good thing we're getting some instruction from Dave, who's an old pro. Hi, guys. Paul, how are you, mate? Uh, David. David, Scotty, how are you? Scotty, how are you, Scotty? Good, yeah. Come on through. All right, mate. Come no on. Worries. And here we are, fish everywhere. Pretty special. Yeah, right? yeah. Every fish has dream. We're pretty lucky. So what have you got in here? We've got some rainbows and browns, is there? In the... Yeah, nearly all rainbows in here. Yeah. Okay. Well, about two to three pound. Yeah. yeah. So they're good size. Yeah, very good size. <laughs> so this time of the year, what sort of flies do you think we'll be using? Well, on the river, we'll be using well, mayflies and caddis. We won't yeah. be using beetles and ants just yet. They're right. a bit early. Yeah, so it's like not warm a... enough yet. Wet fly, you're talking no, about. no, no, dry flies and wet flies this time of year. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. So, again, sorry, the, the, the dry fly floats on the top, dry fly floats on the and top, the wet fly sinks, sinks down, down ah, to right, what okay. a, whatever depth you want. But how yeah. do you know when it's sunk down? How do you know if it's taken the, do you get a bite like a normal? You'll feel him grab you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you don't have like a float or anything no, like that? No, 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 you can feel it. The rods are very sensitive. Yeah. So, yeah, as soon as he touches it, you'll feel that. So I think you sort of understand that I've never done this before. <laughs> yeah. The way I'm talking, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> you'll be right. I've got some rods over here. You have to have a look at those now and work yeah, out which yeah. end is the which end which is which. Is, which end's the good end. It's a big, long, very soft stick. Yep, yep. And... I do know what a rod is. So yeah, I... no, no. It's, just, it's probably a lot softer than what you're used to. See, that's the line, though, isn't that? That's thick and sort of very stand out, but... Down here it's very thin and very fine so that it doesn't frighten the fish. This coloured line is to get it out there for get you. Get it out there. Once you know yeah, how yeah, to yeah. hold the rod and cast the rod. Okay. So you start by learning how to cast. Dave brings us round to the training pond and runs us through some casting basics. Okay, well learning to fly fish is learning three basic parts of the cast. One's called the pickup cast, which is simply picking it up off the water and getting into the air. And then the other cast is called a false cast, where you're falsely casting backwards and forwards, either measuring distance to the fish or changing direction slightly. And then the one where you drop it onto the water to catch the fish is called the presentation cast. It takes a little while to get those all coordinated and working together, but once you've got it, you've got it for life. Okay. Yeah. There's one other little cast that we use to tidy up line and that's called a roll cast. If the line's all messy on the water, if you tried to pick it up, you would be in very bad shape. Yeah. So rather than do that, we just lift the rod up and then we push the rod forward sharply and it straightens the line out enough yeah. so that when we do pick up our pickup cast, it works. We go into our false cast and then we have a presentation cast to finish. Well, so you've just got to practice those things. You're actually going to put a hook on the end of mine. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a hook on and then the fish will really start to quiver in <laughs> yeah, fear because they know you Yeah, it's a red fin. Yeah, nice fish. Beautiful looking fish, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they've got a terrific colour. Watch your spikes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're better than a trout to eat, by far. Now, you said something about the spikes when I was bringing it in. Oh, yeah. They've got these on the top. Yep. They all hurt, and yep. he's got a couple of bit of 
on the top end of his gill there, there's another one. It's a bit softer, yeah. but these ones hurt if they get into okay. you. We'll put him back in the water, yeah, eh? Just drop him back in, yeah. Boom. Gone like a ballistic missile. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, catch a trout there. Now a trout. Let him run a bit. Let him run a bit. Balls on. And don't let it, don't get any more line in, but just lift his head every now and again and get him to gulp air. And that, that really tires them out. It's a very nice rainbow trout. I'm absolutely over the moon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. David, <laughs> over the moon. That's it. There you got him. Look at that. What a beautiful trout. <laughs> hey? Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Let's get you him back did, in. You, eh? did, you did it. Yeah, yeah. I know it's tuition, mate. And you got me on the one. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> How great is this location? We're less than 50 metres from the cabin. I'm uh, getting some skills on my fly rod that I haven't used for a few years. Paul's down there getting some great tuition from Dave. He's already caught a nice trout. I've nailed two redfin. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so. It's been an incredible afternoon learning from Dave and I can't wait to go drift boating tomorrow. A nice little uh, rainbow here. Yeah, happy to take a wet fly. Yeah, it took a wet fly. We fished her dry for quite a while. Yeah. But it's a good little pattern. Oh, 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 hey. Hey. Listen, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> He's That's a quick release. Oh, well. <laughs> He's only a little one. He's destined to go back. Beautiful, first little wild rainbow shroud. Fantastic. Pop him back, eh? Yeah, Pop him back in the net. See if he swims, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure he's 
sitting up like that. He's telling us he's happy. There he goes. There he goes. Wow. Straight to the bottom. Well, you've done it. I'm hooked. <laughs> Learned to catch us today. Yeah. Caught a nice fish today. Yeah, that was unreal. Thanks very Fantastic. much. Fantastic. We continue fishing down the river and try and catch a few more, but it's just not happening. I think I've still got a lot to learn. Well, it's been an absolutely beautiful morning on the Goulburn River. We've caught a few nice small trout. It's been a little tough, but uh, just talk us through some of the, the flies we've been using, Dave. Well, we've, been, we've, we've tried a few methods because the fish weren't that active, so we've done a bit of nymph fishing under an indicator, and you know, the nymphs are yeah, those little fellas. That's, that's these little fellas that got swimming around the bucket, right? Yeah, that's right. So we're representing those with a with a nymph that's really tiny. Tiny, yeah. You know, what it size matches up. That's about a 14 hook. Oh, okay. Yep. And they're just dark brown. They match up. That method today hasn't caught us a fish. What has caught us the fish today are wet flies. Oh, okay. Subsurface. So, yeah, what does this guy represent? It's representing a small bait fish swimming in the river. Okay. And it's aggressively made to sort of flash and flare as it goes through the water, and oh. it's ch it makes the fish charge and attack it. So, okay. it's a, it's so what in, what um, what makes you think we should use a, a wet fly or maybe a dry fly? Well, it's activity on the river. If you're drifting down the river and you're not seeing terribly much on the surface, yep. you're saying, well, the fish are staying down, there's nothing encouraging them to rise, so a wet fly is a better option, something that gets in their zone, and, and that's what we've been trying to do through the day. So if we're not seeing them on the surface, obviously they're, they're head down, they're nudging yeah. around in the rocks. Yeah, or sitting mid-water cruising, just waiting yeah. for yeah. something to come Small along. Bait fish. And the bait fish goes past his nose, it's a territorial response action, a feed action, so he chases it and grabs it. You can grab him. Coming up after the break, we try a hand at some land-based fishing. After a fantastic day of drift boating yesterday, we're going to try our luck fishing the banks of the river. We put our waders on and look for a good spot to start. But before we get into it, Dave gives us some useful feedback on our casting technique. Paul, for first day out getting a fish, fan that's fantastic. We have days out where people don't get a fish first yeah, day. It's not, yeah. like, it's not that easy when you first start fly fishing, getting that presentation out no, it's there. Not easy at all. Yeah. And you know, he's got another bit of a quantum learn again today, so he'll get a little bit better again today. Presentation I found right at the end there, especially on that last hour of the day when they're all coming up smashing the, I just yeah. I was getting I'm probably a bit too excited. You get excited, that's, yeah, yeah and then when, with that excitement, the timing goes off and it's all yeah. about timing that action, no matter what the excitement's going on, that's a hard discipline for anybody yeah. to pick up on first guard. I reckon we should go fishing this, yeah. I can see fish behind us here starting to rise, so yeah. I'm getting eager to get out there and get into yeah. them. Well, I've just got to control you a bit because you're a big long salt water caster and you want to go three quarters of a mile across the river. I'll behave myself today. You just fish a little bit more <laughs> controlled because okay. these fish look at you very critically, not you, but they look at your presentation very quickly. And the longer you cast, the more you're likely to get the presentation collapse. Then they're wary and they're very hard to catch when they're wary. Okay. You should it's be throwing rose petals at them, not rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
shows us a different way of cooking trout. What a fantastic morning walk in the riverbank. Paul just lost an absolute ripper. Dave and myself have both got a nice little trout, but I'm going to light the fire now and get started for lunch. While I keep the fire going, Paul starts preparing all the ingredients. For this dish, I'm going to use the heat in the fire embers to cook our vegetables. I quarter up some asparagus and wrap it up in foil with some finely chopped garlic and butter. I also wrap up some potatoes which I've parboiled earlier along with some corn on the cob. For the salad, I peel and segment an orange and a ruby red grapefruit, being careful to remove all the pith. I finely slice some onion and then grate and shave some parmesan. Now it's time to prepare our trout. Now all the fish that we caught today, we released. Now I've got a couple of fish here from the local trout farm down the road. I'm going to cook these today. So Scott, can you take the fillets off for me? Sure can. That'd be fantastic, mate. Yep, I'll look after them. So while Scott's filleting the fish, I'm going to make a nice English spinach and almond pesto. What we've got in my pestle and mortar here is some almonds and some garlic. I'm going to crush these guys up. Now I'll put the almonds and the garlic in first, so it doesn't bruise the spinach. We want to keep that spinach nice and green. You can basically use any nuts that you want to. You can put macadamia nuts in there if you want, pistachios. Today I'm going to use almonds because almonds traditionally are always served with trout. So I just thought, well, we'll do a little bit of a spin on that. I add in a splash of oil to help lubricate the mixture and continue pounding. Then I add some parmesan cheese and finally some torn up spinach. I continue pounding all the ingredients until I get a nice green paste. Then to finish it off, I add in a good squeeze of lemon. Look at the beautiful colour. It's going to be great in our trout. I wonder how he's going with them fillets. How are you going with them fillets, mate? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Oh, he's here. You're here already. Yeah. Lovely, they look wonderful. Well, Scott, I've got a, a great little dish that we're going to do with these. You've been wondering about the boards for ages. Yep. I've sort of kept it away from you a little bit. Yep. Okay, what we're going to do is if you can grab me one of the boards from across, across the way there. Watch, they're slippery. Oh, they're all right. I've lost the fillet three times on. Oh, have you? <laughs> Not the okay, so what we're going to do, whack one of these on here, like so. Okay. All right, and you're going to nail it right there. Okay. Fine. That's it. This is a Scandinavian dish. Now, they do this with Atlantic salmon. So I thought to myself, why not try it with our trout? Um, I think it'll work really well. We're going to actually prop them up against the, uh, the fire and we're going to actually cook them. I get Scott to nail the remaining fillets to the planks and I carefully remove all the pin bones. I rub a little bit of oil on the fillets, give them a sprinkle of salt and pepper and set the planks up next to the fire. All right, I reckon it's basically going to take around about 10 to 15 minutes. You get a bit of smoky flavour from the fire. It gently cooks the protein in the fish. And what I've got to do now is make a quick salad to go with them. In my bowl of rocket leaves, I add the red grapefruit and orange segments, onion, parmesan cheese, a little bit of olive oil, and just a touch of red wine vinegar. Okay, I'm gonna leave that now to permeate, get all them flavors in there. I'm not gonna to start tossing it around. What'll happen is it'll bruise, so we're gonna toss it last minute and pop it on our boards with oh, our yeah. trout. While the trout is gently cooking, I throw the corn onto the fire coals. Wait for them to cook for a few minutes, then Scott throws in the parboiled potatoes. Yeah, well, it's important with a fire to get a good base of coals. Yeah. And then you just slowly add sticks just to keep your heat there. Just add heat as you need it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's working well, mate. Anyway, We're a team. We're a I'm team, gonna... lad. We're a team. I'm going to shoot it off and have a fish with Dave. I'm going to leave you with it. Okay. All right. No worries. How come I always get stuck with the cooking? I'm going to be fishing. Clearly lacking the same passion for our team, Scott leaves me to finish off the rest of the dish. I add a few more sticks to the fire. Throw in the asparagus and soon enough, it's time to plate up. Look at this. Woo. What? <laughs> what a presentation. You are that? Yeah. yeah, that's good, man. Fantastic. Pull yourselves up a stump. Trap, good. Oh, a bit fancy for down the river, but a bit fancy. It's we just a piece it. of it's a bit of trout nailed to a board, mate. Uh. It's 
terrific. It's beautiful. Mm. It's nice, you like that? Mm, it's fresh and nice. yeah. We've had an amazing few days on the Goulburn River, and honestly, if you want the full fly fishing experience, there's no better place than the Goulburn Valley Fly Fishing Centre. Whilst we can't claim to be pro fly fishermen yet, Dave has helped us come a long way. Come on, hard now. Yeah. What's this, the cook and the sook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well, what are we going to do? We should go fishing, I think. Yeah, you reckon so? <laughs> I reckon, yeah. Come on, let's go inside. Looking forward to it, mate. <laughs> Scott, you meant to say something. What are you doing? Now, if you fell out, you'd be the first person in the history of Golden Valley fly fishing to have fallen out. So it wouldn't be a good look on YouTube. Not a good look. <laughs> it's always the first. <laughs> okay, okay. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> That's close.